Thank Yifeng for inviting me to talk about AMC8 and math counts. The information I'm providing is based on my own experience as a volunteer coach of math counts for sixth graders. To understand the similarity and the difference between AMC8 and math counts, let's take a look at two recent questions. The question on the left side is a 2019 math counts chapter round target question. It asks the number of paths from A to B if one can only move to right or down. The question on the right side is question 21 in this year's AMC 8. It asks, on a chessboard, how many ways can a bishop, which only moves diagonally, move from P to Q? The two questions look very similar. Indeed, they do require similar strategies, that is, one needs to know how to count the number of paths. The two problems we just saw are quite similar to each other. Let's try to understand the differences between the two competitions. Math Counts was established by National Society of Professional Engineers and the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. The national round is typically webcasted by ESPN and winners of the national competition are often invited to the White House. Many middle schools provide math counts training to their students. For sixth graders in elementary school, parents can volunteer to coordinate training and events. Last year, I took 10 sixth graders to the Orange County chapter round. It was a full day event with multiple fun activities. In the morning, they took three tests. In the afternoon, they listened to a talk. Uh, there was Canada competition and it was concluded with an awards ceremony. AMC8 is one of the many tests that are offered by the Mathematical Association of America. Note that AMC8 is not a qualifying test. That is, doing well in AMC8 does not lead to advancement to other tests. AMC10-12 are the starting point of the series of competitions towards the International Mathematical Olympiad. You now understand that these two competitions are offered by different organizations. But math is math. If a student enjoys a math counts, he or she is likely to also enjoy AMC8. Both competitions are excellent math enrichment activities. For AMC8, any student who's in eighth or lower grades can attend it. For math counts, it's for students in the sixth to eighth grades. In terms of a difficulty level, AMC8 is comparable to math counts chapter round. I'm going to talk more about the structure of math counts. Math counts state or national competitions are much harder than AMC8. This year, both math counts and AMC use the AOPS platform. Students need an account in order to take the exams online. In general, people believe that AMC 8 requires more and deeper thinking. For math counts, speed matters a lot. Also, students need to be very familiar and organized when doing calculations. Here are two questions that involve counting the number of items. The computation involved in the AMC8 question is not a lot as long as we recognize that B is the only point on three lines. If every point was on two lines, the sum should be twice of the sum of 1 through 6, which is 42. Thus, the number that B represents must be 5. Let's switch to the math counts question. It asks us to find the number of triangles in the Belgian truss. We have to be very organized, accurate, and fast to get the correct answer quickly. Next, let's continue summarizing the differences between AMC8 and math counts by looking at their formats, list of topics, and difficulty. Let's take a look at their formats. AMC8 is a single exam with 25 questions. Students have 40 minutes to finish it. Math Counts is a series of competitions 
with four different levels, the school level, the chapter level, the state level, and the national level. Each level includes four different tests. Every participant needs to finish a sprint round. It has 30 questions. Students need to finish it in 40 minutes. In the target round, each student needs to finish four pairs of questions. They have six minutes to finish each pair. Then for qualified team players, they can attend a team round. For top scored students, they will be invited to do a countdown round. This year, due to pandemic, the school chapter state round will be online and there will be no countdown or team round for those three levels. In terms of the format, the AMC 8 questions are all multiple choices. As comparison, for math counts, all the questions are free responses, but they do have a very, very strict requirement of forms. For AMC 8, calculators are not allowed. For math counts, students can use a calculator for target or team runs. In terms of time, AMC 8 is offered every November. Math Counts is more like a year-round program. Around January, coaches typically they give a school round. In February, there is a chapter round. In March, there is a state round. And in May, there is the national round. Due to pandemic, this year there are some changes. For example, there is an invitational chapter round. The information on this slide is from the official website of Math Council. You can see the most recent rules about how to advance to different rounds. Here are the topics of the two competitions. The list for AMC 8 is from the description of AMC 8 on the official website. The list for Math Council is from a trusted website. As the exams are evolving to meet new educational needs, these descriptions might not be complete. They might not reflect recent changes or trends. For example, similar triangles were not required in AMC 8 before 2018. And also, based on my experience, Math Counts covers a broader range of topics. For example, in math counts competitions, it's common to see intercepts and slopes, parallel lines, perpendicular lines, coordinated geometry, transformations of shapes. Here are three recent math counts questions. Two are about rotations of shapes. One is about reflection. These type of questions are not very common in AMC 8. Here is a numerical comparison of the difficulty level between AMC 8 and Math Council. People typically compare AMC 8 with the school or chapter round of Math Council. You see that based on the numbers, the 0 to 5 scale, with 0 being the easiest and 5 being the most difficult. The numbers are quite similar. That being said, in my opinion, for math counts, the easiest problems are easier than AMC problems, and the most difficult problems are more challenging or complicated or time-consuming than AMC 8 problems. Let's look at a few examples. The first 10 problems in the chapter or school sprint rounds are typically very easy. For example, here are the first two problems of the 2019 chapter sprint round. Then let's look at some uh, difficult or challenging or time-consuming problem. Here is a good example. It's from 2015 Math Counts chapter sprint round, question 29. When 1 over 98 is expressed as decimal, what is the 10th digit to the right of the decimal point? Student should either know how to solve it using long division or they should know some tricks to solve this problem. Here is another example. 
This is a form 2019 Math Cans chapter target around question 8. In this problem, we need to list multiple cases. So it's quite time consuming and it also requires some analytical and logical reasoning. I hope now you understand better about AMC8 and Math Cans. Please keep in mind that the missions of both competitions are to encourage, to promote math. And also, we hope that students are going to enjoy math by participating in these fun activities. If you or your student has a passion in math, don't miss these fun activities. AMC8 and Math Counts are different competitions. For example, speed matters more for Math Counts than for AMC8. But math is math. When a student is studying to prepare one, the student will also improve his or her performance in the other competition. It's not a bad idea to study and practice both.